Hello and welcome to the Mobile Accessible Games interview series. I'm your host, Aaron Spelker, and the Mobile Accessible Games interview series is all about talking with game developers and accessibility influencers about the state of mobile accessible gaming. And this week, we're going to do something a little different. I actually brought in a guest host. It's Liam Irvin. He's a accessibility advocate as well as an accessibility content creator. And he is going to be the guest host today because the person being interviewed is me. So, Liam, thank you for hosting today. Well, thank you, Aaron, for having me. It's great to be back, everyone. I think Aaron missed me so much that he invited <laughs> me back. I um, did, I did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> so uh, we have a really interesting uh, show lined up for you today, and I'm really kind of excited about this one. This is uh, Aaron's list of was it the 10 most... What did you have that the 10, your 10, you yes, thought 10, 10 inf influential uh, mobile accessible games that help change the state of accessible gaming. Absolutely. And it's, uh, what do we say? 10 years, 10 games, 10 genres. Yep. So 10s across the board. 10s across is, the board. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 10s across the board. So this is a, uh, I believe you made this list, uh, article for pocket gamer. Yep. It's out on pocket gamer pocketgamer.com. Very cool. Um, I, I write several different articles for them uh, all around accessibility. So I've uh, you know, done interviews with uh, some accessibility, um, you know, uh, creators and advocates. I've uh, written a feature piece for To the Dragon Cave. I wrote uh, the benefits of gaming for the blind and visually impaired community. So a lot of you know different topics, all but all around uh, accessible yeah. uh, content. So what were some of the uh, things that you used to create this list? What were some of the things that you looked for? Yeah, so I mean, uh, so at the Mobile Accessible Games uh, Facebook group, I've been for the last 18 months, I've been every week playing a game, reviewing it, and posting it out on the Facebook group. And so we're closing in to just about 100 games at this point. Uh, and one of the big features of you know, doing that is I wanted to make sure that I kept finding new genres to play and review because, right. you know, like I love RPGs and I could spend a year just playing, you know, a hundred different RPG games, but that doesn't leave much for other people who aren't interested in RPG games. So I really, you know, concentrated, okay, let me make sure I get a real time strategy game and a card game and a board game and a, you know, text adventure game. And, you know, just really all these different genres. I worked really hard to, you know, have, you know, probably 20 different genres that are covered across those almost 100 games. And so I kind of got through and, you know, as I kind of looked at the list, it's like, well, that that particular game was really interesting and really did something different in, you know, accessible gaming. And then, you know, saw another one that really stood out to me. And, you know, I basically came up with a list of, you know, here are 10 accessible games that really did something unique and interesting and advanced mobile accessible gaming and you know as you'll see in the list you know somebody who did something 10 years ago someone more recently kind of built off of that you know or was yeah. inspired by that so um it, it really does kind of build off of each other to further us down you know a more accessible gaming path and so i thought it'd be a really interesting article to again kind of pull out 10 games over 10 years across 10 different genres so that there would be a game for you know anyone who read the article that they might be interested in checking out and it is very cool to see that sort of chronological, uh, not not so much development, but just to kind of look back and be like, oh, yeah, this did come out in 2015. When do you start? 20, 2013. Uh, 2013. So it is really interesting to, you know, kind of go back and go, oh, yeah, that was 2013. And yeah, that is, you know, there and, and all that. Um, so should we start with the list? Yeah, please. All right. So the first one we have 2013. Dice World. Right. So Dice World is, is an interesting one. So, uh, you know, I went blind three years ago and I went out and I kept looking for, okay, what games can a blind person play? You know, that's, that was my Google search. And Dice World just kept coming up over and over again. And when I went out, you know, joined some Facebook groups and, you know, blind gaming Facebook groups, I'd be like, oh, what, what games are you guys playing? What can, what game can a blind person? Again, like Dice World was, you know, eight out of the 10 answers. And so I, I eventually checked it out. It actually wasn't the first blind game I played, but I, early on I did uh, uh, check it out. And what's really interesting about Dice World is it has five different dice games. They're competitive dice games, and you are playing those with other people, uh, you know, over the internet. 
Um, and I thought that was really fascinating because I am playing somebody and that person on the other side is probably not blind as you know, the majority of people aren't blind. So I was able to compete at a competitive level and this you know strategy competitive uh, dice game against anyone. Right. And I thought that was really interesting of you know creating a uh, multiplayer game, allowing uh, people to get connected and play against each other and make me feel like I can compete on the same level as anybody else. And, you know, it has a pretty big blind community following. So, you know, you can get a lot of people talking in the blind community about Dice World and their experience about Dice World. I'm not, I haven't met a person who plays mobile games who's blind who hasn't played Dice World at this point. And the longevity also is, is very just amazing as well that it's still really popular. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. People are still playing it, um, yeah. and it's regularly played. It comes up uh, every, almost every day in the Facebook groups when someone really? asks, yeah, asks about a game. Someone throws out Dice World, um, and it, it, Dice World is while I like it, and I and you know may, obviously made it on this list as you know a great achievement to you know very early on you know it's the first one on this list to kind of be accessible to the blind community and you know start making those con those social connections for the blind community. It's also the one that inspired me to kick off uh, my Facebook group and start reviewing uh, games because I was like, there's got to be more for us than just this dice game that everybody's mentioning. Like that right. can't be the only game that I can play as a blind person. And so I was a little frustrated that that kept being the answer. Uh, great game, uh, you know, as I, as it made, made it to this list, but it was frustrating to me that no, there's got to be more for us. It can't just be this one type of game. And so I really started scouring and I, um, you know, I was really having trouble finding a, a, a comprehensive list. And I eventually said to myself, well, if no one's going to have the list, maybe I should create the list yeah. and I'll, I'll make the list. And I will also give, you know, in-depth reviews of the game. So people really know, you know, how accessible is it and, you know, how fun is it? And if there is an accessibility issue, let me kind of, you know, explain how to get around that so that you can have a fun experience and you don't quit out of frustration. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, Dice, I'd say Dice World's very good first first one so we're going to move on to our second one so 2014 again 10 you know, what are we 10 games 10 years 10 genres right so what's that 10 times 10 times 10 is thousand so thousand yes if you're uh, a <laughs> thousand iterations if you're cubing it at home uh <laughs> so our second game is actually more of a collection of games uh blindfold games yep yeah so uh blindfold games was uh, a, a series you know a suite of games by marty schultz um, where what's really interesting about this one, and again, what the, you know, pretty early on on the list, is that he created a whole bunch, whole bunch of different types of games. Right. So you know, he has card games, he has board games, he has adventure games, he has strategy games. You, you know, he has uh, racing games. There's there's a whole gambit, uh, casino games that that he has available, and some of them are better and more interesting than the others, and so, you know, some of them are you know basic and you know not all that interesting to me. But the real achievement is that he strategized out and and planned out all these different types of games and how could I do this using voiceover. And each game, you know, uses the you know the same type of gesture. So you you know it's pretty easy to pick up. You know, if you learn one of his games, you can pretty much play all of his games uh, because it's very uh, similar in its setup and and approach. And so right. I I thought that was really interesting to at least start thinking about. You know, here's how you could do this. And you know, like I said, some of them seem a little bit more basic. Uh, you know, but it is a launching pad for other people to take that and do more complex things with it by kind of following the idea of how he approached some of those, you know, different genres. Right. No, and that, and that makes a lot of sense. Definitely. I have um, experienced some of those games. Uh, like you said, some are definitely very basic, um, but obviously it is a great launching pad to show that, hey, you know what, these sort of games can be done. Um, they can be done in a way that is simple and intuitive. And I think intuitive is very important. So mm -hmm. I would say that that's a very good thing uh, for sure. So that is. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, like you said, the intuitive is important because I think, you know, people can get frustrated easy and just be yeah. like, oh, this doesn't work for me because I'm blind as opposed to like, well, maybe this doesn't work because it just doesn't have good, uh, you know, function control make, design you know what I mean? if you make five things and all five of those things control the same people will be able to quickly 
pick them up and use them. Right. Exactly. Uh, so that's that's you know kind of a big thing. So the other, uh, the other thing oh, yeah, about sorry. yeah the other thing about blindfold games and you know it, it's I look at it as a good thing. I think other people having kind of a different approach might look at it as a bad thing. But he you know a lot of his games have kind of you know you start off with some limited access and then you you have to pay to get you know the the full game or you know here's some coins ten coins and you spend the coins to you know play the game for a while right. for free and then you've got to buy more coins to keep playing well my, microtransactions now have become very commonplace so that's not unheard of right um but the, the the way i look at it is you know he does give you a period of time or a slice of the game or you know 10 coins or whatever to play the game for free yeah for you to have a chance to be like oh can i play this as a blind person do i like this as a blind person before i actually invest some money so i, I look at it as a good thing um I, a lot of people get to oh now i got to pay money for coins and you know it, but you know games aren't you know shouldn't be free someone you know marty and his team worked hard to create all these games and you know they, they yeah. should get paid so they can create the next game so i look at it as a good thing he, he gives you an opportunity to play the game for free you can decide whether you like it or not. If you like it, go buy it. If you don't like it, move on to one of his other games. Absolutely. Uh, so you know, that's how I, I kind of view that, uh, you know, yeah. fr from a positive angle, as opposed to some people kind of view it as a negative angle. But now uh, we'll, we'll move on to one that actually, I, I probably, I, I think I'm supposed to be unbiased here, but I, I guess I'm a little <laughs> nah, biased. Yeah, uh, okay, cool. Show love. Yeah. Um. So we uh, we're moving on to a dark room. Yes. Um. A Dark Room was actually my first blind game that I really played. Uh, like I said, I went to the, you know, looking for that list. Dice World kept coming up. Somewhere along the line, someone mentioned A Dark Room. And I went out and I played The Dark Room. It's a very interesting kind of resource manager that turns into kind of an RPG type of game. Yeah. Uh, but there's a mystery that you're kind of unraveling and trying to figure out, you know, what role you play and in, in what's happening in the world. Um, so it's a really kind of compelling story, interesting concept, you, you know, a lot of different mechanics of, you know, resource management and fighting in, in the in an open world. Um, he created uh, in the open world part, as you kind of traverse the map, he created a really interesting um like map legend, you know, it, it tells you you're standing here and, you know, two up and one over is a house and, you know, five down and six over is, uh, you know, entrance to the city. Yes. So, it, you know, it does a really good job of, you know, you can kind of envision the world that you're standing in um, using that uh, relative map legend to kind of describe the world around you. Um, you know, really, really good job, I thought, of, of creating that. And it was the first game that I you know, when I was done playing that, I said, okay, yes, I can have a fun blind gaming experience. It is yes. not all hollow. It's all not shallow. It's not all a, a shell of what other people get to play. Uh, I think I had the same experience as anybody who played yeah, a dark I, room. I do and remember fun. playing that and, and feeling the same way. Also appreciating how the end of the game was designed. Um, Cause some things were redone. Was it the, without, spoiling anything just there's an end part that yeah there, i think was done yes. differently for us yes that's true there's a there's kind of like a, an escape let's just say without giving too much away yeah and and um there's things coming out you but since we're blind and we can't really uh you know tell where it's coming from or he didn't you know, know how to code you know coming out of the left or the right at that time he kind of created a bypass for people who had engaged voiceover. which was great yeah. i mean that 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 was great yeah, very much so. And um, it had a sequel, by the way. So did you ever play the, was uh, it the Ensign? The Ensign, yes. Yeah, I did play that. Uh, you know, I thought A Dark Room was better. Um, the Ensign kind of con concentrates on the the second half, uh, the kind of, um, what's it called? Like the, the well, the, the RPG world part. Um, Correct. It kind, of, it kind of concentrates on that. Yeah. And it... Also, um, as opposed to you kind of crafting the various weapons because you had that resource management part and you kind of craft, you know, the the different gear that you had um, in the ensign, you just kind of found it in the world, and that yeah. that seemed a little less satisfying to me. Um, you know, but both both games definitely do take good advantage of voiceover and are both yeah. just really good to play. Yeah. 
and it it definitely the uh the ensign is actually kind of more like a prequel of giving you some more background oh, that's, of the that's world. right i was gonna say it is more i i called it a sequel but yeah, yeah. it was the, the second, second yeah. it was the second game but i right. actually yes i do believe it takes place yeah, before, before dark room yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll move on to our next one, Football Chairman Pro. Now, I got to be honest, this is one that I never heard of. So uh, I'm going to learn something today. All right. So Football Chairman Pro is a uh, soccer game. Uh, You are in the UK soccer leagues and you can basically take a team, you know, from the beer leagues, you know, of a bunch of scrubs all the way to the you know premier leagues. Uh, so is this like Ted ranks. Lasso, but just it you know. is it's very much, <laughs> yeah, it's very very much Ted Lasso. Um, but you, you know, you're you're you know, uh, you, you have your team of players, you know, all with kind of different stats and different skills. You can uh, do things to you know increase their you, you know their abilities. You you know their contracts. You have to you know sign them to contracts, and then when mm-hmm. the contract's over, you got to try to renegotiate or you lose them. And then you have, uh, you know, a kind of a minor league that you're trying to bring up players through. You you're managing the stadium. How big is your stadium? How many food concessions? You know, what are you selling things for? Uh, you, you know, you got to manage the turf. You know, if the turf is really terrible at your stadium, your team's going to you know perform right. poorly, or or people will get injured. So there's just a lot of different stuff to keep track of, and there's a, just a, a plethora of. Um, statistics around, you know, each player and how do they yeah. score and, and, you know, how your team's doing. And I, I loved it because I just love having all that information. One of my favorite games before I went blind was uh, out of the park baseball, which is a baseball simulation game. Yes. And I've very, heard of that. Yeah. Very similar, you know, except baseball instead of soccer and was in love with that game, you know, had a, had a baseball team that, you know, I ran for a hundred seasons um, and that game is completely inaccessible. And I had reached out to them right after I went blind and be like, you know, oh, you know, tell me how to access this game as a blind person. And they said, oh, you can't. And then a little bit later, um, I saw that they came out with out of the park, out of the park baseball go, which was a mobile version of the game. I'm like, yeah, um, that was actually after I played football chairman pro. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, football, football chairman pro was able to you know, do all of this, you know, management of the stadium and the players and tradings and, you know, all the stuff that basically is in this baseball simulation game, I'm sure out of the park baseball yeah. go is going to be accessible and it completely was not. No. And so that, that was a big disappointment for me. And and I know it can be done because, you know, football chairman pro was able to do it in you know, whatever way they approached it. So it sounds um, like I have a new game to check out. It's so fun. I, I just, you know, I couldn't stop, uh, <laughs> stop playing the game. Um, and then I actually, uh, I'm not a big Twitter person, but, uh, I, if you, uh, post your achievements out to Twitter, it gives you like loads more money, uh, to oh, spend. Wow. I'm like, you know, I have like one person following me on Twitter, so I feel perfectly fine, uh, <laughs> you know, flooding their, uh, yeah. box with, <laughs> with my achievements on, uh, football chairman pro, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's been downloaded uh, to over two million times. Wow. Uh, there's, you know, there's lots of quotes from, you know, famous soccer players around the world who play it and, uh, you know, other celebrities who play it. So, I mean, it's a, a pretty popular game. Um, and I, I would love it if they put their attention towards doing the same thing, uh, but with baseball. Um, it's, that would it's be one, amazing. It's one of my frustrations because, I mean, baseball is one of those sports for the blind that, you know, you can easily follow what is happening and yes. picture what's happening. Um, and it, it really kind of disappoint me that there doesn't seem to be a real accessible baseball game, um, for us to, you know, enjoy when that's like yeah. the one sport that we have kind of a connection to. So we'll move on to the next one. This is one I definitely know very well and have, uh, streamed, uh, on occasion, right. a blind legend. Yes. Uh, a blind legend. Um, uh, so in a, in a blind legend, it's kind of a, semi open world situation you are playing a blind knight um you are uh you know traversing the world fighting enemies uh you kind of have your daughter as your sidekick and when you're kind of lost she'll call out and be like over here and they'll come out of your you know right uh speaker or your left speaker to kind of help you figure out where you need to go yeah i do, I do believe it is first person movement so yeah Yep. Um, but you're kind of contained within a path, you know, like yeah. it's not fully open world, you know, right. you, there is some edges to, you know, where you can go. So you, you, you won't really get lost in that game. You know, you kind of go forward. Uh, uh, but it, it kind of was the start of 
an open world audio experience. You know, you're walking by, you're hearing the person, you know, the blacksmith hammering stuff and, you know, you can hear it in front of you and then past you. And then, yeah. uh, you know, you're engaging in fights where you're, you know, swiping up and down and left and right to, you know, block or, or attack the enemy. So it, it kind of has that first creation and feel of an open world type of experience uh, that you can engage in and traverse, you know, completely on your own and be involved in a, you know, a complete storyline um, as you kind of go on this adventure with your daughter. Um, so I, I really was in, impressed with that as an experience and, and really see it as a launching pad of what other other people have leveraged, uh, you know, to create, you know, even better versions of that or, or more, more complex audio uh, directional sound, you know, like a, a dust light story just came out, you know, that uses some pretty good um, audio sound in that. Uh, and, uh, you know, I hope that they take that game and, you know, really build off of what they've started with. They kind of have a, the episode one is kind of like, you know, a, a brief appetizer of what that game could be. And I, really, Absolutely. Hope they, I, yes. I really hope they take it to uh, a fully open kind of experience and, and much longer um, kind of gameplay. Okay. So um, we've what got... were your thoughts on? on oh, the yeah, you no, I have you... really enjoyed it. I've, I've played it and it's got a good story. It's a couple hours long, so definitely a lot to sink your teeth into um challenging at some points mm -hmm. um also one cool thing it is available on both computer and uh ios as well so this is one of the, the games that's on this list that you can play on both right so if you are more of a obviously this is a mobile gaming centric uh list and uh channel but uh you know if you are watching this going Hey, I do, like don't like my phone or don't <laughs> use my phone as much. Yeah, it's a computer game, so I that's think, cool. I think there is, you know, there's something to be said. There's some games that uh, are on both that it's a little bit easier to play on a computer. Yes, uh, than it is on a phone. I would, I would tend to, I tend to find, I, I just personally, and, and probably just because what I'm used to, I tend to find that I enjoy things on computer more, but I also enjoy them on the phone because I think sometimes things translate better to a phone. I like the phone because um, it's just always with you. You know, you, yeah. you're sitting down and you know hanging out, and your wife's watching something on TV that you, you're not interested in, and I could just be sitting there playing a game. You know, oh, I don't have, for to, go, sure. I don't have to leave the room to, to yeah. go go sit on my computer. But choices are nice, so that's that's always a good thing. Um, so our next game, Zombie Exit, is safe haven. So that's another a, game that I don't actually know about. And that's a good segue because that's a text to you know choose your own adventure text game uh, primarily. Um, so that's a, a really interesting game. It's um, you might have heard of Choice Script, the Choice Script games. Um, yes. So that is on that Choice Script platform. But what I really see he's done is really pushed the limits of what is available in that kind of text adventure genre because it's not just making your choices but every choice is affecting a relationship or gathering new materials or opening and closing you know branches of opportunity in in the choices that you go um and there's you know th this game is not uh quite finished it's um i think in episode three of a, a five episode mm -hmm. arc um, but, you know, he expects to have like a dozen different endings that you can potentially end up with at the end, depending on whether you played the good guy or bad guy or, you know, went on this mission or that mission. Yeah. And the other really interesting thing is this is his second game in this kind of zombie world. So the original one was Zombie Exodus. This is Zombie Exodus Safe Haven, uh, which is a kind of the second game in this world. And Zombie Exodus, um, the, the developer had gotten so much feedback from blind people about playing that game and enjoying that game and, you know, having a lot of fun with it, um, that when he created Zombie Exodus Safe Haven, he created kind of a, you know, an avatar generator, right? Like you can kind of pick your profession and pick, you know, uh, other aspects about yourself yep. um, that kind of increase or decrease different skill sets that you can use as you play the game. And he ensured to include, uh, people who uh, were blind, you could choose to be blind, you could wow. choose to be deaf. Um, and that created, you know, obviously unique challenges as you try to you know, survive in a zombie world. So he really wanted that's really know, fascinating, actually. And I was I was actually if you hadn't mentioned that I was going to mention that if you are watching this podcast, you really should read the article, because Aaron's written a lot about each game and not everything that is mentioned here. Uh, you know, like not everything that's in the review has been mentioned here so yeah. worth reading versa. that yeah, yeah. The, the developer i mean the other thing he has also is uh, mental illness so he has um delusions you can mm -hmm. check 
you know, select that uh, you're a player who has delusions. And he says that drastically changes the game is playing with delusions because wow. you don't really know what's real and what's not real. And you don't even know if there's really a zombie apocalypse or not a zombie apocalypse. So um, yeah, just really fascinating. And you, you gather a t- you know team of people, you know, I think you, it, it can be, if you manage to collect everybody, there's like 20 people who can be kind of in your little squad, if you will. And you, yep. You know, you can assign them all different tasks uh, to do, uh, which you know affects you know how much uh, you know food you gather or water you gather, or you know whether if you get attacked, whether you're able to actually fend off the attack. You know, you kind of assign people to tasks um, as you kind of protect your safe haven in the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, this this looks really cool. I will definitely have to check this out. This is not something I was aware of. Yeah, it's fun game. Right. And I'm I'm a zombie lover, so I play all things zombie. Oh, you, absolutely. I, I mean, if you if you're create if you're out there and you're creating a game, just put the word zombie in it, and you know I'll play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and he's he's there. So our next game is a few minutes of glory. Now this is a game that I am sort of familiar with, but um, I believe you are more familiar with it than I am. Yeah, yeah. So this game is a real time strategy game. So you are kind of uh, building up your uh, defense and attack. Uh, forces to kind of make it through uh, a series of battles. You have a certain time limit of, uh, I think it's four minutes. You have to do a whole bunch of different tasks to kind of build up your squad, uh, your attacking squad or your defensive squad. And what's really kind of interesting about that is other real-time strategy games that I've played, I found it really difficult as a voiceover user, since we have to kind of swipe through every single piece of content that's on a screen to do things fast enough to really effectively play the game. And, you know, either, you know, it's really, really difficult because we can't get enough done or, you know, it, it takes us twice as long because we're, we're just not progressing as fast. But yep. the game developer of this game really created such a tight design that it was really easy. I, you know, I always kind of finished my round with time to spare, even though I was using voiceover. Right. And so what, you know, really the piece for here is he created a compact, you know, user interface to make a real-time strategy game actually accessible for the blind. And, and know, that really... is something that if you are a developer and you are watching this, um, the amount of information that someone that is blind that can take in uh, is is definitely not as much as someone that can see can take in. So obviously the amount of time needed changes. Yeah. Um, so that's really cool, actually, that that's not an issue. And he, uh, the developer here, I mean, he, you know, throwing back to one on the earlier list, I mean, he mentioned that he was inspired to do accessibility from Amir Rajan, who did A Dark Room. So right. he, he kind of seen what he had done about accessibility. So he thought about accessibility and he's actually created a, a, a several different games in a couple different genres, um, which uh, again is really interesting. Uh, you know, usually you see a developer kind of stick within a, you know, I'm going to do RPG games or I'm going to do this type of yeah. game. He's kind of created a couple different types of games, uh, which has been interesting, and oh, uh, awesome. all of all of them fully accessible. So, so very very cool. So that would definitely be one that maybe I'll have to revisit that again. I have a it's, lot of games. Nice this, and- this this list has really given me a lot of food for thought, honestly. Well, well, that is a that is a hope. I mean, again, doing this for ten genres was to be sure that someone who read this list would find a game for them. Yeah, uh, off the list. Um, and you know, again, real time strategy games. We don't see many of those that are really accessible for us. So I was kind of excited to you know find one that that worked well and I could add yeah. to this type of list. So we'll move on to the next one, and this 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 one is. Um... Oh, I hear about this all the time. Sorty Quest. Yes. Um, so Sorty Quest, a big open world um, RPG, fighting dragons and monsters and collecting loot and, you know, uh, collecting resources. And I really had a, a great position on this game because I, I got onto it early and I watched over a series of, you know, six to eight months, this game develop and change. And the developer, Charlie Seligman, he, you know, reached out to the blind community and said, how can I make this accessible? You know, what features would you like? And like, I don't know if this guy ever slept because, you know, within a day or two, he would have what people were asking, you know, and you'd be labeling buttons or, 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 uh, you know, just making other things accessible, changing things up to announce, you know, the battles better for us to hear what's happening. Yeah. Um, it just, and new content and new maps and, you know, just constantly new um, items being added to that game, all fully accessible. Again, um, 
his the map is huge. It's a 50 by 50 map. Uh, and again, kind of looks back to a dark room. Again, this is why a dark room definitely makes it on this list because it has a relative, um, you know, point of interest legend, just like a dark room had. So you're standing here and it'll tell you, you know, how many squares away is, you know, the castle or the dragon or the, you know, shipyard or whatever the case may be. And then a, a great feature that Charlie added beyond that was he created like an auto travel. So you could go and, you know, okay, I'm, you know, really far from the castle and it's kind of a hassle to kind of, you know, navigate this map as a blind yeah. person. But if I go over to the castle and I select it, it will now auto travel me to, um, you know, to the castle. So, you know, it, the castle might be, 20 things away, I move three steps at a time. So, it, you know, it'll take me whatever, seven, uh, you know, turns to get there. And over the course of the seven turns, when you stop at a square, you know, you might end up facing a, a random monster attack, or you might decide to stop and collect some resources at that location. But it it takes away the hassle of trying to navigate a, such a huge map as a blind and, person. And the beauty, the beauty of that is too, is it, it gives people multiple methods Mm -hmm. of interacting with something because it's not a one size fits all uh, sort of, I think blind people, some people have a harder time with maps. Other people have an easier time. And so it's really great to see someone go, yeah, let me try to make multiple methods to do the right. same thing. Uh, and it, I, I will say sorty quest works well. It's a game I have not played in a long time. Uh, I need to get back to it. So I'm kind of this sort of jogged me and went, hey, <laughs> I need to revisit this you're game. Gonna be, you're going to be busy. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to have basically. no free time. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, yeah, and, and I really look at this game. I look at what Charlie did and really the collaboration that he did with the blind community and listening to the voices of the blind community and, and factoring in changes. Um, and early on, uh, you know, really made that game something special of a collaboration between a developer and the needs of the blind community. And I really, yes. you know, my hat's, uh, you know, I tip my hat, hat off to him for that achievement. Um, I actually, last year, uh, what I do every year, um, last year being the first year, this year will be the second year, is I take the games I reviewed for that year. So I reviewed 60 games last year, and I say, here's a list of games I reviewed. Um, let's vote as a community as what's the game of the year from the ones that I reviewed. And so last year, Sporty Quest won uh, wow. game, game of the year for the mobile accessible. As, as I as I really think it probably should. Yep. Um, so we'll move on to the next one. And <laughs> I've got fond memories of this one, a blind drive. Blind drive. Blind drive uh, tied for second in that uh, voting that I was just talking about. Um, blind drive fun. It's a, it's a racing game. Kind of starts off where uh, you're a college kid trying to earn some money. You go... Uh, to kind of this car and they you get kind of locked in with all the windows blacked out and the car starts and you have to drive and avoid you know oncoming traffic and you know make all the right turns you know and not crash and and get to the end and it kind of has a, a story that goes along with it and what i find really special about this game is the audio sound quality in the game you know you're driving and then you know suddenly there's a rainstorm and you're trying to hear the cars through the rainstorm um, or you know you're getting annoyed by a, a bee that's in the in the car and buzzing around and distracting you as you're trying to also listen for you know all the uh, obstructions of the road and and where the turns are and I, I found it really unique again I played this early on of being blind and I said this is kind of like real life I'm constantly trying to pick out a particular sound from a yes. cacophony of noises and this is almost like training for me to, to the sound the sound design was amazing yeah. um, I they, honestly. There is nothing in the game I don't like. I Everything about that game is awesome. One of my favorite things about the game is that it it is a game that was really not necessarily designed for blind people. Yeah. It it's But it was designed in a way that blind people can play it. Blind Drive was uh, just their placeholder title uh for that game they were going to name yeah. it something different and then it just kind of got out there that it was called blind drive and they just said eh, we'll stick with it um so i thought that was kind of interesting and well, contrary to prior belief from a lot of people i am not in the game uh i do not voice anyone in the game oh really when that game when it first came out everyone's like hey are you in the game 
You As kind a, of sound like Donnie. I'm like, I'm yeah, not the protagonist. Donnie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. not the guy on the phone. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. it, it it's got to be a guy doing the grandma voice, right? No. No. I do not believe so. Um, I, I don't think so. That's, a, that's the one voice that sounds like super fake. You know, like, no, oh, it's, there's, oh, there, Donnie, there's actually, so a, there's a great, um, forgot their name they they post on twitter occasionally but there was a video put up of the recording session and it's hilarious the the grandma has the best lines yes oh i'm if if you have never played blind drive you you gotta play it it's so twisted yeah fun and and and, and it has an interesting twist so all is not as it seems that oh way. it's just it's so bizarre and it's great i i adore it that was a good one and then finally, we go to this year's game, To the Dragon Cave. Yes. So To the Dragon Cave um, is a first-person shooter game, which, again, you don't see many of those um, you know, come out uh, for the blind community. Uh, it's just a kind of a challenging thing to do. But um, it, it also has a female blind protagonist, a, a princess who's you know locked in a tower, and her prince comes to rescue her, and he gets... Uh, taken and she decides to break out and save him so it's kind of like a flip on the uh, fairy tale you know trope if you will yeah um and then the the really interesting thing that adds this to the list is and i wrote a you know a, an article about this in detail for pocketgamer.com but just kind of the backstory of this game as well it, it's by a, a a husband and wife team the wife is blind the husband is sighted and you know she was you know playing games uh but you know again kind of having that you know lesser than experience on the games that she got to play versus the games that he got to play uh you know he, he loved first person shooters she didn't really have you know any opportunity to really experience that with him and uh you know one day she was playing her favorite game and there was an ios update and it rendered the game uh inaccessible and, you know, she was really kind of sad about it. And he said, well, you know what, I am going to create you a game and I'm going to do it in a first person shooter game. So you can you know, enjoy what I enjoy and see what I, what's great about first person shooters since you haven't been able to really enjoy that experience. And he, you know, for his love for his wife, he, you know, created this game for her yeah. uh, and you know, created a whole gaming company. I think they're working on their second game right now. Um, but, uh, you know, I really like that. Um, you know, kind of background. They hired a lot of blind people to, you know, do the voiceover acting in that game and, to, you know, be, be people at the company. So it, it's really kind of a, a full, you know, from start to finish yeah. blind it's, experience. It's a fun little game. I would, I would definitely recommend checking it out. And it's current. It's a new game. It's got, it's got this year. Yeah, good humor in that game as well. Yeah, yeah it, it is funny. Um, definitely without spoiling much, uh, choices matter. Yes. I think we can agree and say choices matter. So, um, that is to the Dragon Cave. So uh, I'm curious, were there any sort of honorable omissions when you were building this list that maybe you were like, this one was good, it just... Well, one but... of, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, one of the requirements, one, it obviously had to be a game I played, right? Um, to really know enough about it. Um, I also wanted it to be a game that was still available on the App Store so that ah, people could look okay. through this list and actually play it. Because, you know, I heard I never got to play like Papa Sangre. I heard it was amazing, right. uh, but I never got to play that game because it was off the App Store. Um, right. So I never played it. And so if I put it on this list, people would go out looking for it and not find it. And, so. I, and I did. And I realized that when I looked at the list, um, if it were available, I, I do think, though, that would definitely be on this list. Um for sure because what it did was pretty revolutionary but unfortunately yes those are no longer available yeah. which is really a shame. Yeah, audio defense too but I right talk about that one a lot um so yeah there there's a there's you know some um of those that i just didn't get to to really play um i i tossed with um some card games you know because again i was trying to do 10 different genres mm -hmm. um i actually a, a game that was on the list and then i switched it out for blindfold uh, the blindfold games one um, was a game called Lost Cities, which, yes. which um, interesting competitive card game. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, different 
information that needs to be fed back to you. And then at the game, at the end, it'll give you kind of like a round by round how the game went, which I thought was, you know, nice, fun feedback for a blind person to kind of be able to digest. One, what one cool thing too about Lost Cities is it is also a uh, game you can play online. Yep. Yeah, you can play. So that's because I don't know if there's really a lot of those. Uh, yep. So if you know, that's definitely if you're looking for something playable with friends. It's um, what's also fascinating about that because I, I played quite a bit against the the different computer opponents, mm-hmm. and uh, you know got got pretty good at beating those. And then I said, all right, well let me play against you know I'll see if there's uh, other live people out there, which there were. Which often it, it, that that was a game that came out like 2014 or something like that. Yeah. Often when you go to multiplayer games that are that old, you know, the, the community, the online community is dead, you know, no one's playing it and you can't right. get matched with anybody, but I got matched with, you know, uh, people pretty easily. And it was really interesting to see other people's strategies that were completely different than what the computer was doing or what I was doing to win the game. And, you know, often they spanked me pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's the like, way of things you, you get really good at beating a computer and then you play another human and you're just like, Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, um I just feel like they got all the cards. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was really interesting to kind of see different strategies. You know, the, the, each computer uh, opponent has a, a very different strategy. And then, you know, hit every human basically had a different strategy, which I thought was yeah. really, really interesting in the game. And I thought that was a really uh, fun game to play. But um, I kind of, uh, I th- I, when I really thought about it and saw that it kind of came out in the same year, the Blindfold Games, I thought kind of had a more compelling in the the opening up of a whole bunch of different genres again um lost cities might be a a better game unto itself but kind of what blindfold games has done for progressing the concept of thinking about accessibility in a whole bunch of different types of games i think is pretty pretty unique makes sense i was just curious if there were any sort of like you know honorable mentions that maybe hadn't you had thought about and were like well this fits but this fits better yeah Yeah. um yeah, they got there's you know there's some other ones that uh, you know you might consider, but I, I didn't want to make it the you know eleven games you know the ten ten right. ten was the one to do that. But any anyone that you uh, say, oh that's a mistake, you didn't add this to the list. No, I I can't really think of any. I forgot what year it came out, but I thought Audio Wizards was a fun one. Mm-hmm. So Audio Wizards, um, there's two games, actually three games, that mm-hmm. I constantly go back to to try to play. Um, so when I review a game, I play it. I, if it's a game that's finishable, I'll finish it. Mm-hmm. If, it's a, if it's a game that you know never ends, you know I'll play it for a long time just to really make sure I've seen all the kinks and all the permutations. But there are three games that I am just so bad at that I cannot um, make it far enough to review the game. Okay, and that's Audio Wizards. Um, and again, I don't know if it's just me with the gestures on the phone. Like, I wonder if I sit down and play that on the computer because I think that's available on the computer as well. It, it is on PC, yes. You, um, might, you may have an easier time on PC. Yeah. Um, I noticed it was a little easier for me. Yeah. So that one, I, yeah, you know, again, it's a okay. mobile, game, mobile gaming site. I've tried to play that, and I'm just so bad at it that I can't get far enough to really review it. Yeah. Um, there's a game called Blind Gladiator, which looks oh. super fun. Mm-hmm. Um and you basically have to kind of like dodge of an attack and then, you know, uh, yep. you know, get some strikes in and, and all that. And I just cannot consistently dodge. And so before yeah. I can win a battle, I, I die. And I don't feel like I'm doing anything wrong. Like I've played other games like that um, where, you know, I have to dodge and I do it just fine. But that one, I just, again, I don't know if it's me or if it's just not good, uh, you, you know, uh, recognition of the movement I've done. Mm. Um, and then the third one is Audio Rally Racing, uh, which is a racing game. And I really want to do it because I don't have many racing games on the list. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I don't think there's anything wrong with the game. I think I'm just bad at doing yeah, it that just, game. It's probably, you know, swiping is hard with that sort of control. I think if you had a controller or a keyboard or something, it might be a little easier. Um, but but those I, are... Those, yeah. I need to like hire an employee or something and be like, play these three games. Yeah. <laughs> review them I, I adore, I will say though, I adore Audio Wizards. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's just kooky and odd and fun. And, but I, I completely get the um, not being able to deal with all the swipes. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. And again, I, like I, I keep going back to it because I'm like, well, maybe I'm a better blind gamer now. Like, you know, I played this in my first month of being blind. Maybe I was just bad at being a blind gamer. But I'm a hundred games in of reviewing games and probably played uh, you know 150 games. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm probably pretty good. And if I can't do it, maybe maybe it's not me. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't know. Um, so that's a uh, that's a little frustrating if you will but, but otherwise i i think the list is really solid obviously there's a few games that i never uh you know experienced so i'm learning something new and that's that's kind of cool and, and that's you know that's just, what makes what you do so great is like there's a lot of games i don't know about all these games so these are worth checking out i would highly recommend that if you haven't gone back go back and and check out the facebook group check out the reviews there's a lot here and if you're looking for games uh this is a great resource yeah and i've had uh the benefit of just about everybody on that list uh i've been able to uh, interview the game developer on just about all of those or will be interviewing them soon so yeah um, that's that's kind of a nice thing of i have some of the, the behind the scenes of you know what it took to create some of these games as well and you know like amir rajan i mean he just he had somebody reach out to him on apple this and said you know i'm I'm playing your game and I'm stuck here. And, you know, could you add some accessibility? And, you know, he put on a blindfold and learned voiceover and played that game until he could play it as a fully blind person. He just kind of picked yep. up that mantle um, because he just wanted people to be able to play his game. And, uh, you know, that's a lot of these people. It's just, you know, I just want more people to be able to play my game. And so they, they figure out how to do the accessibility. And yeah. I really kind of admire that of, you know, yeah, probably I, that is really awesome. You know, if they're lucky, they break even on that uh, time and effort versus sales. Um, so I really appreciate that they, they go ahead and do it for us. All right. Well, that is the list of games. You said that is on pocket gamer. The article is on pocket gamer. Um, in the description, I will put all of the um, links to all of the games on the, uh, app store on the apple app store so uh, make it easy and uh, i will also uh, put links to uh, liam's uh, social media stuff so if you want to follow he's been a great host today so if you want to follow his other content uh, as he covers gaming and accessible gaming i'll put uh, your social media stuff in the uh, in the description as well yeah and check out check out the interview we did i thought it was really good um, that's true yes i interviewed liam a couple months back uh, yeah. about his channel and so the, uh, you know you can check out that i'll put that in the description too if people thank you check that out well so. i will hand the uh, i will hand the podcast back over to you but thank you for letting me host my pleasure thank you for doing this for me i didn't want to interview myself i thought that would be a little weird <laughs> so, so so aaron what do you think about this game well aaron i <laughs> exactly i think it was great oh that's great aaron you you're know. the best host and best interviewee i've ever had Aaron. listen that's that's how you end up uh, having to see doctors you know <laughs> exactly. i mean when you start people take pills for that right <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say yeah all right. Well, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll, you know, check out the, the pocketgamer.com articles as well. Uh, you know, some interesting articles there. And I'm, and I'm always looking for uh, ideas as well. So if people have ideas uh, that they want me to write about, be happy to do that. And, uh, you know, keep checking out my content, Facebook group, Twitter, YouTube, all of the different uh, areas where I try to share content about mobile accessible gaming to uh, the blind and visually impaired community.